<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and we're back here yet again looking at an older system on the PlayStation 4. Now, as you can see right here, I have a couple of PlayStation 1 games that have been installed here on the PS4, and I have a video that previously covered that. And I have covered PlayStation 2 games on the PS4, but I want to make a bit of an updated video because there is some new developments that have come about in the scene here, and there's also a really great tool I want to show you all, which is pretty similar to the PSX FPKG tool we saw before. So for this, we're going to need a few things. We're of course going to need our jailbroken PS4. This is going to assume you know how to jailbreak a PS4 and how to navigate it. If you are interested in that, I will have a tutorial linked down below in the description showing how you can jailbreak your PS4 on firmware 6.72 or lower. Or if you maybe want something a little bit older like PS1 games, I'll have that one linked as well. But since we're tackling PS2, we're of course going to need our PS2 games that we want to back up and convert over to a fake package file. We're also going to need a computer to download and run the applications we'll need, and of course a USB flash drive to transfer over our game, if that's going to be your method of transferring and installing. So with that, let's go ahead, move over to the PC and get started on here. All these downloads are going to be down below in the description, but the first application is going to be PS2 FPKG. Now, this app, as it says here, converts PS2 ISOs and BinQ games to FPKG, which we can install on the PlayStation 4 itself. Now, I'm really only going to be covering single games and single disc games on here. If you want to experiment with multi-disc games or packing different games into your package file, that is completely up to you. I'm not going to be going into the detail with that here, but either way, this link to PSX Place will be down below in the description. And you can just come down here and download the latest build which is available. I'd also highly recommend taking a look at the PS2 Classics Emulator compatibility list. This is highly recommended to look at here because there's been a lot of work that's been put in this, but also there's going to be a lot of games that either are playable or have minor issues, major issues, or might not even work on here. There's a couple games I'm going to use for this example and I will showcase why but these couple games I know are going to work. So if you want to go through here, you can go to here for example, and the game I'm going to use, one of the first ones, is going to be Extermination, which I have the NTSCU version, and it says there's minor issues with some frame drops in the NTSC version, so I have to keep that in mind. The other game I'm going to use is Unreal Tournament, which is up here, NTSCU, it's playable, and the note is that it's completely fine, no issues at all. That is awesome. If you're going to be backing up your own PS2 games on Windows, I'd recommend using ImageBurn for this. You can just download this and install it from the website here. And if you need to extract that PS2 FPKG application, you can use something such as 7-Zip to extract it. Alright, so first of all, let's take a look at backing up games, because there's CD-ROM PS2 games and DVD-ROM PS2 games. The first one I'm going to tackle is a DVD-ROM PS2 game which is easy enough. You open up ImageBurn, you click on Create Image File from Disk, make sure you have the proper disk drive highlighted, and right here, everything is showing up, max read speed is fine, and then you'll just want to click on this button and browse to where you want to save this to. You'll want to save this somewhere you can easily find it, and just save it as ISO, just like default on here, name it whatever you want to, you can click on Save, and then once you're ready to rip this game over, you can just click on this button and wait a few minutes for it to rip over to your PC. Now for CD-ROM, it's the exact same setup. You pop it in, you make sure everything is proper, you can do max read speed, and then go ahead and pick where you want to save this to. Now for CD-ROM games, you don't want to save them as ISOs for this application. And in general, it's just good to do bin Q, but you're going to want to save as a bin Q image or as bin files, just right here. It has to be .bin if it's a CD-ROM. So you can click on save, and then here, click on read, and let this read over as well. All right, so for the final things you might need to download, which this is where you have some creative freedom and it's completely up to you. Right here in my extermination folder, for example, I have a cover for the game. 
that I would recommend using. You don't have to, but it's nicer than the default ones. So you can grab a cover that you want for your game as well as a title screen. And these you can just grab images off of Google or wherever you want to grab them from here. So for Extermination, I've gotten two images. For Unreal Tournament, I really couldn't find a title image I like. So I'll show you all how the title image looks and how a custom one looks. I'll be able to show you all both. But either way, we now have our games ripped over and we have images that we'd like to insert into the fake package file. So with that, let's go ahead and create our fake package files. For this, go ahead and grab your PS2 FPKG archive, right click, and extract it wherever you want to access it. This should give us a folder called PS2 FPKG, as well as a readme.txt, which I would highly recommend reading through the readme.txt real quick, just because it has a lot of good information and it's easy enough to sort through right here. Uh, I'm just going to be kind of briefly going over this, but if you want a lot more info and you really want to know what certain settings do, you can totally run through this here. So we can exit out of that and let's open up the folder for PS2 FPKG. Now you'll need to find the PS2 FPKG EXE file and just open it up. It should look a little bit something like this, which this is certainly to be expected. Now just as a heads up, some users have reported issues when generating or saving FPKG files, kind of due to permissions and such on their computer. So if you're running into some issues like this, you might have to exit out of here, go back here, and you might have to right click and run this as administrator just for that extra permission and say yes to this screen. So here it's all pretty easy to sort through. Again, I'm just going to be doing disc one for each of these, but let's do our DVD game, which will be Extermination. So for this, just click on select and find your game. I have the ISO for Extermination here, so I'm going to open this up. And right here, you'll want to select how many discs you have. This is a single disc game, as well as your emulator. Now there's Rogue V1 and Jack V2. And the reason for this is there's multiple different PS2 emulators that came out on PS2 games. And it's been reported that Jack V2 has nicer compatibility compared to the Rogue V1 emulator. So you might run into some games where they'll work better with one emulator compared to another. By default, this goes to Jack V2, so that's what I'm going to use. Now for your icon and background here. For the icon, let's go ahead, click on select. And this is going to be the icon that you see in the actual cross media bar, like on the menu of your PS4. So you can grab that, and for the background, grab whatever background image or title image you want to use. For the NP title and the tile itself, these should already populate. This is like your disk ID title, and this is what will show up on your cross media bar, like on the menu of the PS4. So that should all be fine. You can tick use compression. There's really no issues I've run into with that. Now for anything else here for emulator settings, if you want to play around with these further, you're more than welcome to. I really haven't had to experiment with these any further. And PS2 FPKG settings, it looks like this is going to be something that will be used later on. But either way, we can really just sit right here, just click on Create FPKG, and find a folder you want to save this to, just somewhere you can easily find this game. Once you select a place, this will come up, this info, everything looks fine, we can press OK. And now, this is going to come up, which will say creating an image. Just give this a few seconds or a few minutes here to generate your fake package file. And that's it. It now says process finished. So we can click OK and exit out of here. If we go over to where our DVD game is, we have the images we've downloaded, the game dump, as well as a new package file which is the actual PS2 game that we're going to install. And just looking at the file size here, this is almost, the original ISO is almost two gigabytes in size. This one is like 700 megabytes in size, so I'm super impressed with that compression. But now let's do the same thing with a CD-ROM based PS2 game. All right, so heads up and a change in plans here. I was using Unreal Tournament and for whatever reason, despite even re-ripping the game, I was not able to get this application to open it up. I tried on different drives, administrator mode, could not get it working for whatever reason. So I'm using a game which I know kind of works. I say kind of because I know this game will work and boot, 
but when I played it, I did not have any sound on the game. But it will at least work as a demonstration here, so I'm going to be using Tech and Tag Tournament. Now, if you're going to be using a CD-ROM based game, again, you'll go into PS2 FPKG, right click, run this as administrator if you can, and from here, click on select, find your game, the bin file itself, click on open, and wait a few seconds here. I notice it kind of does this where it says not responding. With CD based games, it's a little bit different, but just wait. If this prompt comes up asking for a LIMG segment to be added to the end of this, you want to click on yes. So right here, we have all that set up. So again, it's going to be a single disc. I'm just going to use the Jack 2 or Jack version 2 emulator. And for the icon, I only have an icon set up here. So I'm going to grab that. Looks like the NP title, it automatically threw something in there. The title itself is fine. I'm going to use compression, emulator settings. There's not too much else to do on here. So I'm now going to create FPKG. Go ahead, click OK here. And it's going to create an image. And just like before, as you can see, we have our PS2 game dump, the image file, and we have a new package file right there, which is the actual game. And it compressed it by about 200 megabytes, which is nice. So now let's go ahead and get these two transferred over to a USB drive or whatever method you're going to use to install these to your console. For my USB drive, I'm going to right click, go to properties, and make sure your file system is either XFAT or FAT32. I do recommend XFAT for the PS4. If you need to format this, make sure you back up any data you care about off your USB drive. Right click, format, XFAT is fine. Default allocation size, quick format, that's all okay. And that's been formatted. So now with here, you just go into your USB drive, the root of it, and grab your package files. So copy it out and paste to the root of your USB drive. And I'm going to do the same thing with Tech and Tag Tournament. So it's as easy as that. And just like any other package file, any other games or emulators or what have you that you've installed on your PS4, it's all the exact same. All right, so there we go. Once we have all of our packages copied over, we can come back, right click, safely eject our USB drive, and then transfer it over to our PS4 and continue on. Back over at your PS4, plug your USB drive into the console itself. Make sure you have jailbroken your PS4 so you have run the required payload you need. Now, just like anything else, we're going to go to our settings, go all the way down to debug settings, game, that airs fine, package installer, and you can install one at a time or install all of them if you have set up multiple package files. As I obviously have two package files here, I'm just going to do an install all and wait a few moments for this to finish. All right, so both those have finished up. If I press the PlayStation button, check it out. I now have Tekken Tag Tournament as well as Extermination. So let's go ahead and fire the both of these up. First of all, you'll see this is my custom icon, but if I fire up Tekken Tag Tournament, the default image here for the title or background, whatever you want to call it, is just the PlayStation 2 logo. And then we have the nice PS2 splash screen there. So if you're seeing this jittering here, this is not your screen messing up on you or anything. This is just an issue which is inherent to Tech and Tag Tournament running on the PS4 with the PlayStation 2 emulator right here. But as you can see, I mean, we have this working and such. It is loaded up. The only downside is at least this has been with my own here. Um, I don't seem to have sound on this game. Like, the game displays, it works, it's a little bit jumpy, so a lot of people might not really want to mess around with that. Uh, maybe if you play some music in the background and just imagine it, you know, this will be fine. But either way, this is one of the examples of something that you might run into uh, with your PS2 games. Since this is still emulation, it's not going to be perfect, and some of the imperfections are like here with everything jumping around a bit and no audio playing. You can also maybe mess around with that a little bit by trying other PS2 emulators or PS4, but I digress, this is still emulation you're messing around with. But I will say it looks pretty good for what it is. So let's go ahead exit out of here. I know that Tekken Tag Tournament works if we are okay with deafening silence. And let's also fire up Extermination. I've tried this game out before, I know this will work, and it seemed to work quite beautifully. 
So let's go ahead and fire this up. Dennis here. This is Roger. Where are you? Look up. There's a ventilation shaft up here. It should lead into the compound. You need to get up here. Come on. This icy cliff looks impossible. You'll have to find a way around it. Just follow my directions. First, activate the elevator. Got it. Alright, so check this out everyone, we are in game, and I have to say, I mean, yeah, this does still look like a PS2 game, mind you, but my goodness, this looks really good, like really sharp for what it is, I, I have definitely been impressed with this, so either way, we were able to get this up and running, thankfully, I'll just go ahead, grab this here, because this is what I'm going to need, this game's a little bit wonky, so I kind of have to get used to it again, but either way, we were able to get this up and running, and Extermination seems to be working just fine on here, which I'm more than happy with. So, it, it is a little bit of a journey and kind of some fun experimentation, maybe even a little bit frustrating getting, you know, your PS2 games up and running on here. It's easy enough to convert them, but whether they're going to work well or not, that's completely dependent on settings and the emulator and such that you choose to use. But as you can see right here, for example, this seems to be working well enough and it looks surprisingly good for what it is. But yeah, that's about it everyone. As you can see, we got a couple of PS2 games installed successfully on our jailbroken PS4 and I think that should make plenty of people happy. Anyways, that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed it, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. But as I always say, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.